Hey guys, welcome back to Real Housewives Recaps. Today, we're talking revenge. <laughs> Come on, admit it. How many of you are saying revenge like that now, right? Guys, this is future Jen here, and I'm just telling you, you have to look at the screen a lot on this one. I had so much fun putting this together. This is bad fashion edition. I knew there were some bad looks, but seeing it all together like this is very um, eye-opening. So take a look, have some laughs. Let's get into this. Thank you for joining me again. I am loving recapping this book. I hope you hear the happiness in my voice. I've been reading all your comments. You guys are amazing. Oh, speaking of comments, I heard you loud and clear. Apparently some drama happened at the wedding I didn't even know about, which was Megan swatting her what is it, the footman, I guess, the guy that helps you in the car, away at the wedding. So guys, I have a video of it. So I thought at the end of this video, let's take a deep dive into it and take a look. What do you say? Stick around, watch it with me. Okay, so we are jumping back into revenge. <laughs> and I can't help but say it that way. Again, thank you for being here. Thank you for all the wonderful comments. I have that merch out. It's been flying off the shelves. Thank you all so much who have picked it up. I have Recollections May Vary out. That's been really popular as well. Thank you. Let me know in the comments if you pick something up so I can write thank you. Um, what else? Oh, check out Patreon. I promise Jay and I are about to sit down and record some really fun things we came up with over there. All about Harry and Megan. God, it feels weird to call them that. Hank and Skank. We're gonna be talking Hank and Skank over there. So <laughs> check that out for sure. Let's just dive into revenge. You guys are so great in the comments. Again, I love reading them. Thank you for all the love and support. I have so many new subscribers here. If you're new, Welcome. I'm so glad you're here. We we're a great group, a lot of fun, and we love deep diving into all this. So let's jump in. Okay. So I left off revenge on <laughs> chapter 23, discussing the wedding. I went deep into the wedding in the last episode. Check that out in case you missed it. So in this one, they just got back from their honeymoon. So they just breeze over the honeymoon, but you know, I'm a nosy, you know what? So I had to deep dive into it. Not much to to find that uh, there were reports of different locations, but best I could find it, they went to Seychelles. There were reports of different places. It looks like they went to Seychelles, which I, I only know the place because I've heard William and Catherine talk about going there before and it looks incredibly gorgeous. So apparently, supposedly that's where Harry and Meghan went. Now on that stupid Netflix documentary, they were very vague about it. They just said they went to the Mediterranean and I remember them saying some nonsense like they left in, what was it, waste removal trucks? Okay, like you couldn't, <laughs> you're telling me you don't have some blacked out windowed cars you guys could leave in? Come on, attention. <laughs> I'm sure you did leave in those and Megan was rolling down the window saying, hey guys, it's me, Megan, the whole time, right? <laughs> she wanted her peeps to know where she was at, right? She wanted to make sure she had adoring fans. But guys, I was able to get Hank of Hank and Skank on to discuss his honeymoon. Tell us how it went. My brother's jealous of me. Whoa, weird detail to focus on on your honeymoon, but okay. I went on my honeymoon. My Taja oscillated wildly. I put on mommy's face cream. No, don't start this again. Do not tell us about your Taja and your mummy. Ew. I like to apply cream on myself and watch Real Housewives recaps. Oh my god, we're going to stop it there. Um, thanks. Also, you can check out me, uh, Dr. Bad Vibes, on YouTube. Meanwhile, during this time, Oprah was texting Megan. Dun, dun, dun. So remember, in the last video, I talked about how Oprah was trying to get an interview with Megan before the wedding. And, of course, Megan is all about me gain, so she was all for it. But the palace was like, no, 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 no. Not doing that. And Megan left some cryptic thing about when the time is right, I will sit with you. Some soap opera dramatic, I don't, suits, I don't know. <laughs> suits. When I say something dramatic, just yell suits at me. Suits. <laughs> All right. So also during this time, Oprah visited Doria. Now I remember this. I don't know why I remember this, but I do remember this. Was there talk of her and Doria working together on a project or was it all to get the exclusive with Megan? I don't know. It sounds like they're all kissing each other's you know what's if you ask me. But again, that seems to be how Harry and Megan operate. 
Okay, so she remained in constant contact with people in California. Tom Bauer, again, have to show Tom Bauer some love. I love this book so much. He knows all the details on everything. He says that she stayed in contact with her publicist, her lawyer, and her business manager. Hmm, setting the stage for something in the future? Interesting. Okay, but nothing's planned, you guys. Nothing's planned. Yeah, right. Okay, we jumped over to Chapter 24, Tremors. So we pick up in June of 2018. The two happiest couple, hee <laughs> hee wink, wink, nudge, nudge, they are back from their honeymoon. And they're at Trooping the Color. Now, I know what you're thinking, because I'm thinking it too. I was like, is this the one? Is this my favorite Trooping the Color? Do you know what I'm talking about? You guys, my favorite, seriously, one of my favorite moments is, it's not this Trooping the Color. Um, It's the 2019 one. It's when Harry, Harold, told Megan to turn around twice on the balcony, and she got pissed and it was so fun to watch. Oh, it's so fun. But no, this is the 2018 one. This is the year before that. And <laughs> Trouble in Paradise, I guess. But uh, she's wearing that, I don't know, blush colored outfit and uh, matching hat here. First time at the Buckingham balcony. Lots of forced smiles is what was noted. Um, apparently, just before they came out to the balcony, there was a conversation about hierarchy. And she disliked being junior to Kate. Well, tough shit. I wouldn't even say you're second to Kate. I'd say you're two billionth to Kate. <laughs> like, you don't even compare. <laughs> um, she thought, Megan thought she should be treated as an equal. And Harry was egging this behavior on. Well, of course he was. He's the spare. I'm the spare. Ugh, it's- Gag me. I said that before. You guys got a kick out of it. Gag me with a spoon. I thought it was a Southern saying, but you guys corrected me and said it was a very old saying. Well, I'm saying it's an old Southern saying. (laughs) But gag me with a spoon. Seriously. Harry was egging this on because Harry's jealous of Willie. So now, I don't know. He's got an inferior complex. So now, I mean, obviously so does she. Okay, so then we have the infamous train trip with the Queen. Now, I found out during this trip that the Queen gave Megan a pair of earrings. Isn't that sweet? I love the Queen. Megan was doing her demure smile, and she was trying to show that she was bonding with the monarch. Meanwhile, aides were noting that Megan was behaving very detached, not following protocol. She was refusing to wear a hat when it was suggested. Things like that, you know, already showing signs of, yeah, I'm not into this. Obviously, we all knew that it happened quick, but to hear it in these terms, just back from your honeymoon, your brand new husband's family, <laughs> already you're being Duchess difficult like on this journey. It's it's just wild. It blows my mind. What did you think you were signing up for? Okay, so Tom Bauer goes on to say that Megan enjoyed the privileges, but she was reluctant to steep herself in British traditions. I'd say that's a very kind way of saying it. Nope, she just wanted to get paid for everything and be able to spend and do as she chooses and not have to answer to anybody or be responsible for anything, or (laughs) play the game at all. Nice, huh? So, meanwhile, Megan's father, Thomas, we had a lot to discuss about him in the last episode. You guys had such great comments about that, feeling similar to me, where you really felt for Thomas. I feel the same way. I really felt for Thomas, especially the part where Charles walked Megan down the aisle and what that must have done to Thomas. And also, you guys reminded me, I knew about the ongoing heart, heart attacks, heart surgery, heart problems. Um, but I forgot you guys remind me he had a stroke around the same time as well. That's just terrible. His last conversation with Megan was three days before the wedding and that was it. He still had not heard anything. He was trying to reestablish contact and she was not replying to texts. She was not answering phone calls. And then all of a sudden her phone went dead. So clearly she got, you know, totally different setup. He was not in the loop of that. Thomas was giving an interview with, I believe it was ITV at the time. He started to speak out and become more vocal and explain that he's sad that he had to miss the wedding. And he gave an interview. Tom Bauer explains it. Basically, he was giving these interviews because of his pride. He didn't like the way he was being 
portrayed and he was being dismissed and portrayed in a negative light and he didn't like any of that he wanted to be able to speak up this is his way of doing that and you know being able to defend himself against some of the stuff he said in this interview he doesn't he didn't want his daughter and his son-in-law to be hurt by any of this he was actually hoping this would be a peace offering yeah that didn't turn out so great Okay, so then it's the Royal Ascot the next day. Megan's plan of cutting him off was not working. She thought it would silence him. He went on to do an interview in Mexico next and literally said he would not be silenced. He started speaking more to the interviewers, giving more interviews because it was becoming more important to him. Thomas Markle hired lawyers to get 50,000 from that Rainer guy. Remember, he's the photographer that did the stage photographs. He had agreed to a set amount at the beginning and then a percentage of the back end. And it sounds like he wasn't paying up. So Thomas had to get lawyers on that. He was saying things like, I love you and I miss you and trying to get Megan to speak to him. There was radio silence on her end. Having outbursts when talking to the British media, he said said in an interview that his daughter is very controlling. What else is new? He calls out her fake smile that he could see. I believe it was at Royal Ascot. He was noticing, or maybe trooping the color, he was noticing that she seemed to have a forced smile. So things were tough all the way around and Megan was doing nothing to make it better. Radio silence on her end. Each rant from Thomas and Samantha um, was denting Meg's popularity. You know, I am surprised from that aspect that she didn't, I don't know, I don't, I'm thinking this out right now in real time. I'm surprised she didn't try to make fake amends on this um, just so her popularity might go, go back up. But then now that I hear myself, I realize, no, that's not, that's not what they do. Her and Harry always have to be the victims. So they made themselves the victims in this and blamed her family for every grievance. Hmm. Again, that sounds familiar, right? They just did that in spare with his family. So they did that originally with her family. So then we go to Wimbledon with Catherine in 2018. They discuss her, it was a mutual discomfort, And I remember this. I remember looking at these pictures and Catherine just has a natural charm and charisma that Maggie Poo just doesn't have. There's a discussion of Megan's unwillingness to be part of a team. Megan was all out for herself. That comes up quite a bit in this part of the book. They talk about that with the palace staff. It, It seemed to be that she thought they were there for her. They're at her beck and call. She's not part of a team that they support. They're hers. So we'll see that come up again. So there was started to be tension between Harry and William as well. So the Sussexes weren't wanting to stay at the same time with William and Kate at Balmoral. Let's take a little trip here. You know, I like to let my mind wander and let's play a little game. All right, leave me some comments about this. So you have the opportunity to stay at Balmoral. With the queen, yes. You have the chance to stay a week. You're staying either with Catherine and William or you're staying with Hank and Skank. Dumb and dumber, miserable and miserable. Or I don't know. Like, <laughs> you name it. Can you imagine? I mean, obviously we know what you'd pick. But just, okay, let's daydream this. What would it be like? Tell me the differences. What's the week like with uh, William and Catherine versus your week with Hank and Skank. What's that like? <laughs> Can you imagine? All right, here's my thoughts. Of course, William and Catherine, I'm hanging out with them. I'm trying to talk shit about his brother. <laughs> I'm petting Catherine's hair, asking her for every product she's ever used, like so I can take notes and go buy the exact same things. I'm you know, having fun with the family. I'm <laughs> enjoying the heck out of them. All right, Hank and Skank, can you imagine? I don't even know what you talk to those two about. Harry is drinking his juice and eating his crayons. Megan is staring at herself in a mirror saying mirror, mirror on the wall. You know, (laughs) I just don't know what you have a conversation with those two about. Can you imagine? I would seriously be sidled up with the queen be like, can you believe these two? (laughs) Oh, the queen. I love her. So July 28th, uh, 2018, still Castle of May. Megan was there. This is where things get interesting. She is, again, not understanding that it's not all about her. 
I don't understand why a 40 something doesn't realize that. I guess she was 30 something at the time, but I don't above the age of seven, don't you realize that that the whole world doesn't revolve around you? I don't know. But Megan still thinks that it revolves around her and everything should be used to promote her. She was using this brief with the media to show how Charles was attached to her. Okay. Said that he admired her interest in history and furniture. So Charles is irritated about the Thomas situation. They don't understand why Megan can't get a hold of you know, can't get a handle on this and why she would not go see him. Why not go see him and make things right? The same thing we've all been saying, like, what the heck is your problem? But what Charles didn't understand is that Harry was withholding critical details about this. Harry wasn't telling Charles, and we find out later he wasn't telling the Queen either, the full truth about what was happening. They were claiming that she was afraid to phone because she suspected that the phone was compromised, that the phone was no longer in uh, Thomas's possession. Then they couldn't email because his email account was compromised. You guys, things are so tough for them. (laughs) Poor thing. They just wanted to do the right thing by her dad, but they couldn't because everything was compromised. Again, doesn't this sound like a middle schooler came up with this? whole idea. So I'm going to say Harry, I'm going to say it was her plan, but that Harry came up with the actual excuse because that is ridiculous. Again, love Tom Bauer. He even says Charles and the queen both got on a conference call, talked to her about it, and they could completely see through her inconsistencies. That's a very polite British way of saying she's full of shit. So (laughs) Megan gave more excuses about why she couldn't just fly over there. She didn't think she could just go to this place and show up and uh, just fix things. And they were again seeing her excuses for what they were and started to call them, quote, far-fetched. Doria may have been persuading Megan not to go back. Okay, so my Cordias, talk me through this. You know, I am obsessed with all this stuff. This is the part where I guess I don't fully understand. Okay, so I know more is coming out about Dora and I can't wait. I'm here for you. You better believe I will be deep diving into it when it comes out. But so if Dora was not around when Megan was growing up, and, and we've been through this, I know. They're using each other, Dora and Megan. So I get that part of it. Why does Dora have such a hatred for Thomas? You know, if he was truly there raising Megan, what I just don't understand the vitriol. Help me understand that. What would be, uh, and I'm not doubting it, I'm just wondering, why did Doria dislike Thomas so much? I remember why they split. She was a, I don't know, free spirit and wanted to travel and then supposedly, you know, 10 years, wonder where she went, you know, <laughs> read between the lines there. But why the hatred between Thomas and Doria? Because Thomas even says he always invited her for Christmases when Megan was growing up and stuff and she would be around. So I I just don't, I just, that's the part I don't, I don't fully understand. You guys can explain it more eloquently than I can. So leave me comments. Let me know. Okay. So Megan, meanwhile, was mad. What else is new? She couldn't communicate with her admirers online. Yep. That's a real line from the book. Just let that sink in. All the stuff going on with her dad. All the stuff going on with your brand new husband's family, that's where her head's at. Megan was mad she couldn't communicate with her admirers. I'm saying admirers plural? Really? (laughs) I know there's like sugars, but I thought there was like four of them. I don't... (laughs) Admirers? So again, the queen and at the time, Prince Charles got on a conference call and were talking to Megan and Harry and urging her to go back to America and fix things. And Meg was rejecting that. She seemed to think that Jason Knopf and others were employed to promote her as an individual. How does she, I don't understand how somebody who supposedly, allegedly had what an, it had studied international relations and she doesn't understand how anything works. I have never heard of a more self-centered person. It just, it blows my mind. So Megan was fuming over Knopf's refusal and she wanted him to officially criticize Thomas Markle. Well, 
we know there, again, we didn't specialize in international relations, but it's easy to understand. We know that they, what is it, never complain, never explain? They just don't do that. They don't, they don't go to war over something like that. It's not their brand. They wouldn't do that, but Megan fails to understand mm, anything. So Megan felt, quote, isolated and stifled. I bet she did. Secretly, she took an initiative. You guys, I forgot about this part of the book. I found it very funny. Okay, remember Gina Nelthorpe Cown? Remember her, that publicist that was a friend to Megan? And you know how it went. Uh, Megan used her until she didn't need her anymore and then dumped her. Okay, well, Gina decided, no, 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 no. So she went and gave an unfavorable interview to the Mail on Sunday. It was a proposed article. It hadn't run yet, as far as I understand it. So she called Megan picky and discussed her instantly dismissing those who didn't share her vision. I would say she instantly dismisses those who can't elevate her vision or help her achieve her vision or she can't step on or use or walk all over. And then she goes on to explain the difficult time she was given in Edinburgh. Remember, that's the story I told you where she thought she was still on okay terms with Megan. She realized Megan had been weird in text, but she thought things were fine. She went to see them on their tour and Megan wouldn't even look at her. They, In fact, she had a, whatever, palace staff whoever, so some staff member move Nelthorpe out of her line and get in Harry's line instead because she didn't even want to look at her. Nice, huh? Very grown up. Megan likes to move on. <laughs> That's the understatement of a century. So Megan was also asked to comment on this article and she was told she was not supposed to. So what did she do? She came up with a backhanded plan to handle it. She calls up her old pal, Jessica Moroni. I'm sorry, but I don't like Jessica Moroni. I don't know anything about her, but her face bothers me. And she was close friends with Megan. So that bothers me too. But <laughs> I do find it funny because she was ghosted eventually too. So how's that feel now, Jessica? Are you glad you wasted part of your life on this what super villain um but megan asked jessica to intervene so she did jessica called up this is the part i didn't understand she called up somebody relating to this article i believe they said a literary agent somebody that had the power to stop this article she talked to them for over two hours i'm thinking why didn't this person hang up i would not be able to deal with that but she decided to put pressure to try to change the article and change Nell Thorpe's statements. Can you imagine? What business is it of Jessica Moroni? Who is Jessica Moroni? Like, <laughs> that's ridiculous. So a complaint was made to the palace about Megan's conduct. And I love that. Can you imagine? God. If she had been mistreating the staff and they took down that complaint, I bet with glee they took it to the powers that be. <laughs> <laughs> but Knopf said he answered the call and said he would uh, ensure that it wouldn't happen again, but admitted that he was powerless. I'm sure that's a sucky place to be, and I'm sure it only added to the tension, um, which aligns with the bullying that he, you know, remember it was Knopf that brought up the bullying stuff that was going on behind the scenes with Megan that, of course, Hank and Skank deny didn't they say they wrote like a 25 page response? If there's nothing there, why'd you have to write 25 pages? Just asking. Again, I have to go the crayon thing. I was just thinking, oh my God, 25 pages of Harry writing in crayon. She good. She didn't do it. <laughs> and then Megan just writes me, 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 me all over it. That's their response for 25 pages. I'm sure Megan probably printed out her IMDb list, whatever. It just says suits really big on it. That's my guess. So they were making missteps and misjudging the media again. I love this because full circle, think about this. Okay. As I'm recording this, it's come out that Oprah had a big old birthday party and invited everybody, but not Maggie. I'm making a fake sad face. <laughs> don't you feel sorry for her? I don't. Um, so I love that. She didn't invite Megan, her very good friend. Hmm. Interesting. 
How's that media stuff working out for you, Maggie Poo? Again, full circle, Megan misjudging the media. They are the villain until they need them and they use them and then they're the villain again. So I love, again, full circle. Here we are. She's making missteps on this tour. You know, I don't like Megan. I would cut her a little slack because, you know, it's her first tour. You know what? Let me rephrase that. I would cut most people some sl slack because it's your first tour. Of course, you're going to make missteps. I'm I'm a petty bitch, but I am also understanding that that happens. Where I don't understand is it sounds like she had a team of people trying to advise her of things and she's just not interested in listening. But then it sounds like she gets real mad when she doesn't listen and things go wrong. Now, the other interesting thing that I would like to spend about 14 hours discussing with you guys is the outfits. They go into four outfits on this part of the tour, whatever they're doing. Um, four outfits cost 28,000 pounds. Most of them were Givenchy. Givenchy. I'm very fancy, you guys. <laughs> you know what's funny? Side note, again, wander with me. I'm sitting here in my Target finest, and <laughs> I realize, oh my God, I have my hair like Megan's from the wedding. I just like put it in a messy bun, right? And like strings are hanging down. And I'm laughing thinking, mine looks more done than Megan's at her wedding. I had so many funny comments about the hair at the wedding. Thank you guys again for your comments. I love them. Okay. So they started to look into Maggie Poo's spending. Again, I need to know every detail. Unfortunately, we don't get into it too hard here, but I want to deep dive it. Believe me. Her last 15 outings, she wore Dior, Givenchy, Prada, Chanel. I don't see Target anywhere in there. No Old Navy? What the hell? Uh, <laughs> no, so she's wearing all these fancy brands. Huh, interesting. The same one she was having her people call up and ask for the Duchess discount. Tacky. Ugh. She never wore the same thing twice. She was looking, they were starting to notice her penchant for spending a whole bunch of money and they were unfavorably comparing her to Catherine, whose annual clothes expenditure, again, this was 2018. Uh, Tom Bauer says her annual, annual clothes expenditure was about $100,000. So her dad, it was July 2018, he says again that he's ready to speak to her. He learned that she's telling people lies about who paid for college. And again, I remember finding this out you know, a long time ago that there was discrepancy over that. And it is so interesting to look at this with fresh eyes coming off all the lies we have found out of spare to hear things like that now too. It's just, it, I don't know why I'm still surprised by all of this, but I am. It, it is m truly mind blowing how, how both, I want to keep calling them I know they're Hank and Skank, but I want to keep calling her Smegma. I don't mean to. It's like Hank and Smeg. Um, <laughs> I know that's really disturbing. Okay. Hank and Skank. We'll stick with that. Hank and Skank. Interesting just to know that Hank and Skank lie about everything. And then here we are looking through those eyes back at this stuff. Like they just have no relationship with the truth at all. So her father, Thomas, starts turning on the royal family. And he starts giving these, I don't know what it is, hellfire interviews about the royal family and how it's a dusty crown and it's an ancient institution stuck in its ways. I don't know what he was hoping to accomplish there. That's not good. Samantha is, meanwhile, still endorsing Thomas. She is saying things like, Megan, you should be ashamed of yourself. It's morally unconscionable to ignore Thomas and you don't just throw away family like a pair of shoes. And again, I say it's fun to read this through fresh eyes, knowing everything we know now, right? Because they both seem to take that attitude with just about everyone. And it sounds like maybe each other now because I keep hearing reports that those two are working on a separation. We'll see if it's true. I'm interested. I'm curious. And I've had people say, you don't want to see him divorce. Listen, I'm not wishing anything on anybody. It'll just be interesting to see how it goes. I'll be here with my popcorn. Okay. So during this time, Samantha's trying to support her dad um, and talking to the press. She decides to take a trip to Kensington Palace. She goes to London, takes the press with her 
and goes up to try to get in Kensington Palace. And they say, no, no, <laughs> no go in. So nobody let her in, obviously. So she, when she was denied entry, she left a letter. No further word about this. But in the letter, supposedly she wrote, don't leave Thomas out to dry. So Tom starts to discuss how Megan was appearing to be guided by her, what's the word, jealousy of Catherine? You should be jealous of her. She starts to become more dismissive of others. I don't know how that's possible. <laughs> sounds like she was already an awful bitch. And uh, it sounds like it was just getting worse. Again, they're just married. So things are already miserable for them. They're those people that are miserable. So they have to make everybody else miserable. Interesting. So Catherine was observing Megan's behavior and noticing that her behavior to the staff was unfortunately getting even worse. Now, remember, Catherine already spoke up about this. According to Tom Bauer, Catherine noted her behavior to be, quote, self-centered, manipulative, and demanding. Again, love me some Catherine. She nailed it. That is exactly, I mean, that's it. I think the exact same thing. I would say that's spot on. We're going to kind of hear, but... Don't go yet. Let's watch this video. You guys had recommended that I watch these videos of Megan climbing out of the car and being rude on her wedding day. And I had no idea this existed. So let's take a look and see what's going on. Okay, so I found this footage. We're going to watch it. I thought, let's just watch it first. And then I'm going to see if I can slow it down and see if I can zoom in at all. Because it's kind of hard to tell what we're looking at. But let's just take a look. Wow, yeah, so that happened really fast. Let's see if we can slow it down and see if I can zoom in at all. Let's take a look. Okay, we're super zoomed in. Here we go. So she's getting out of the car. Cute little kid's getting out first. I heard she dropped Doria off earlier, so that way she wouldn't have to split attention at all. Here you go. He offers his hand. She pushes it away. Oh, my God. Okay, so now we're super zoomed. Now get ready. Because I cut out the little kids getting out. She's going to get out. She's going to slap his hand away. You can see it more clearly here. Here we go. Hand and don't need you anymore. Slap it away. My God, he even looks surprised. I don't watch sports, but I swear to God, this is the closest I'll ever be to watching sports. I'm watching instant replays. This is ridiculous. Yeah, she's clearly smacking his hand away. That's crazy. Here we go. Even closer. Hand. I need help here. My shoe's caught. I get it uncaught and bam. Hand slapped away. Not even making eye contact with him. He's surprised. Oh my god. Seriously, I could watch this all day. This is nuts. Hand. I need your help. My dress is stuck. He tries to help her. Hand pushed away. Won't even make eye contact. He's clearly stunned. What a bitch. Guys, I had so much fun with this one. I really enjoyed... The montage of photographs in the background this time with all of her horrible fashions. I knew there were a bunch, but seeing it together like that, kind of mind-blowing, huh? Also, how about that skirt? I had no idea. I remember that skirt. I didn't think anything about it at the time, but seeing it up close, you can completely, <laughs> completely see through it. That tells me that she was not nice to her staff because anybody nice to their staff, their staff's going to say, um, ma'am, you can see right through your skirt, but... Everybody couldn't stand her, so they just let her go, and I kind of love that. Or she doesn't have any close girlfriends, probably both. But I loved this compilation of photos. If you have something you want to see, like focused on next time, like bad skin or more frowny faces, things like that, let me know in the comments. I'm going to keep, I'm going to keep going with this book and I'll try to get more interviews with Prince Harry, who somebody said in the comments, he sounds kind of like what, sleepy or Arnold Schwarzenegger. I love that. The Drunk Prince and I are about to record our bonus Patreon stuff. So check out Patreon because we're going to be putting extra content over there about Megan and Harry. And guys, thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And just let me know your thoughts in the comments. You know, this is my favorite part, going back and reading the comments. Have a wonderful day. I'll talk to you again soon. Bye-bye.